What if I told you there can be rivers in the sky? Maybe you've heard of them. The atmospheric river. The atmospheric river. Atmospheric river. Atmospheric rivers. Why are we hearing so much about atmospheric rivers right now? Thing is, we've always had them here on the West Coast. So what is an atmospheric river? Like I said, it's pretty much a river in the sky. Imagine a band of concentrated water vapor, 1,600 kilometers long and 400 kilometers wide. Atmospheric rivers can hold a lot of water. Here's how they're formed. Warm ocean water in the tropics evaporates into the air. Let's look at the tropics near Hawaii as an example. Winds shape the moisture into a stream in the atmosphere and carry it to the west coast of the Americas. When an atmospheric river is lifted higher into the sky, like when it rolls over a mountain range, the moisture cools and falls as rain or snow. As it moves farther, it starts to disperse and becomes weaker. Atmospheric rivers are normal and happen all over the world. They naturally replenish coastal water supplies and mountain snowpacks. But if the rain is too heavy, or the storm stalls over one place, or it's followed too soon by another storm, the rain can be overwhelming. The land, river systems, and sewers can't absorb all that water, and flooding occurs. Look what happened in November 2021 in southwestern British Columbia. Two days of intense rain brought flooding and mudslides. Bridges collapsed, roads were washed out, and cars were stranded along highways. The city of Merritt was evacuated, and farms near Abbotsford were flooded. Altogether, five people and thousands of farm animals died as a result. Floods that big are rare, but scientists predict they will become more frequent because of climate change. As the oceans and the atmosphere get warmer, the air can hold more water vapor, about 7% more for every degree the temperature goes up. So climate models are predicting larger atmospheric rivers in the future. The Scripps Institution of Oceanography in California has a scale of 1 to 5 to rate atmospheric rivers. It estimates the strength of the storm and how long it'll last. 1s and 2s are mild and generally beneficial. Higher level ones are more intense and could cause dangerous flooding or mudslides. The intensity is usually greatest in a narrow band and tapers off to the sides. So an atmospheric river can have different numbers in different places. For more about extreme events in nature, check out cbckidsnews.ca. Thanks for watching. For CBC Kids News, I'm Erin Murphy.